Hey everyone, today's review is the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Grade 8 Vegeta. Uh, this just started landing in the States uh, the last week or so. Um, I had found a seller on eBay that got one in. Uh, there, there was very few last week I saw in the West, but now they're starting to pop up more frequently. And uh, I saw that Big Bad Toy Store finally got their stock in. Um, I believe the average retail cost for this is about 170 or so dollars. Uh, eBay is typically a little bit higher than that. Uh, especially if you were going to order it last week, um, the scalpers were charging a little bit higher than retail, but it wasn't terrible. Um, in total, I spent, spent about 200 even, so that's with taxes. It was free shipping, um, which, you know, really isn't free. It's just tallied into the actual cost. Um, I typically would wait for Big Bad Toy Store, but given they have to charge me a state tax now and just how monstrous this figure is and what shipping would have been, it wouldn't have saved me any money. So if you're thinking about getting this, it's probably going to be around for a while uh, on retailer shelves, given the price point is, you know, twice what the most expensive figure was in the line so far. So uh, anyway, I'm going to get into the review. So here's the packaging Ape Vegeta comes in, and as you can see, it's a beast compared to a regular figure arts box. Uh, it's at least six times the size. Um, like I said earlier, the box that I got in the mail earlier, I'm like, that's mostly has to be packing material because the box was just too big. But no, it filled out the entire box. It's, it's, it's crazy how much uh, room they needed for this thing. Here we have the right side of the box. It just has a picture of uh, Vegeta on it with uh, Yajirobe cutting off his tail. The left side of the box, we have some more photos of Vegeta, him roaring, a close-up of his damaged eye, and him uh, crushing uh, Goku with his hands. Here's the top of the box with a few more images of Vegeta. The bottom of the box. And then finally, we have the back of the box, which is the, you know, the collage of all the press photos that have been shown up to this point with all of his accessories, different posing, and uh, the warning label. So uh, that's his packaging. Next, I'll move into my review. I think they perfectly captured the aesthetic of this version of Vegeta. I think it's a 10 out of 10 in that regard. I really love the damaged effects all over his clothing, his torn gloves, his damaged armor, his face. I think the head sculpt is perfect. I, they couldn't have done it any better. But really, my only issue with the figure is just that he's not big enough. Uh, they did show a render of this, the I guess the prototype of this, compared to Saiyan Armor Vegeta to give you a, sc uh, a scaling uh, reference. And it looked like that version was at least a third bigger than this. I really wish they didn't cut him down, but I think they did it because I think they, would, they were going to have to charge collectors, you know, a substantial amount more for uh, the retail cost and I think they didn't want to chase too many people away even though I still think a lot of people aren't going to buy this given the price point but like I said otherwise I think the aesthetics of it are perfect the head sculpt is fantastic the paint works really good there is some little issues with it that I had seen but it's really nothing remarkable I did see some weird residue around his neck or you know his upper pec portion and I, I thought it was some kind of glue or paint flaking, but whatever it was, I was able to just scratch it off with my fingernail. I gotta tell you, this thing weighs a ton. When I, when I got the box, I'm like, this can't be like th th what I ordered because, I mean, I did see some in-hand reviews of it, but I'm like, this, this is just way too heavy for it to be real. Really like the, oh, his leg snapped. Uh, he's, he's got ratchet joints all over the place, and I typically hate those, but I feel like in this case it, it does uh, require it. Got the really long tail with it, which you have to put on when you take it out of the box. Really like the armor on it. It looks great. This is so hard to hold with one arm. It's definitely got to weigh a couple pounds, maybe. Maybe two or three. I think they did release specs of it, of how much it weighs, but it, it, it's just a monster of a figure. I already have a place set up for it on my, uh, my display shelf. And I kind of thought I gave it too much room, but now I don't think I did. I think I gave it just enough. So here's a quick height comparison between Ape Vegeta as well as Saiyan Armor Vegeta and uh, the Kaoken exclusive Goku from I forget which Comic-Con. Um, but I just did a quick Google search, and uh, yeah, I just double-checked that there was a render that they put out some time ago. And I was wrong in saying that it was a third bigger. I think it was probably closer to twice as bigger. Um, because, I mean, Vegeta's head, this particular Vegeta, his head only came up to the kneecap, more or less, of that version of Vegeta. So they really did chop his height down a lot. It's really 
it's really sad that they did that because I think that would have been such a great figure to have on the shelf. Not that this one's bad, but I really think having something that enormous and almost, it still was not quite as big as it should have been, but it was much closer than what we have here, unfortunately. So the head articulation is very similar to what we have with the smaller figures. You can hear how stiff that joint is, and I'm really happy about that given how much this figure weighs because it does need that support. Um, you can't rotate side to side at all, even with the neck. All the other figure arts figures, you can do that, but this one you can't. Um, you can go forward and uh, forward and back. You can bring his chin down to his, uh, the upper portion of his chest armor. You can bring his head back, but you can't bring his head back too far. And then lastly, you can open his mouth. And now this is one of the only other issues I really have with the figures. I don't feel like it, the mouth opens up quite enough. And it looks like it's some camera tricks on the on the, uh, the in the press photos on the back of the box. It looks like you can open it more than this, but unfortunately, this is all you can do. So starting with the arm articulation, uh, the uh, the shoulder uh, pads, um, there is a little scalp portion here that has to wrap around the joint that connects into the shoulders. So I feel like the the best way to have this display would be to push these in as far as they can go to try to hide that. And honestly, I think this looks better like that because if you have them out. You see the interior portion of the shoulder. So this is actually the correct way of having it. As for the arm itself, you can bring it out a solid 90 degrees. And again, I said this is on a ratchet joint. So it will be snapping in certain angles. You can actually, okay, you can actually go a little bit higher than a 90. You have your standard swivel joint. That's the uh, connection point between the bicep and the shoulder. You have your double jointed elbow but it really doesn't want to bend any more than that. It's just a few more degrees than 90. For the wrist, you have your rotation 360 around. There also is a joint in here for bending the, uh, the wrist itself. And uh, it's probably like 25 degrees or so. The shoulder joints can be uh, shrugged up and down. So I can bring him down that far. You can see that there is a discrepancy in the heights here. And then I can bring it up. And then you have to just pinch the arm into the armpit. And now they're, they're pretty much symmetrical. This also has butterfly joints in the chest. And they're actually really good. Uh, the only issue is when you bring them forward, you wouldn't reveal all the in internal housing of the chest cavity. But uh, it's quite, quite nice how far forward you can bring in his arms. And I guess it's specifically for the, uh, the you know, crushing Goku hands, which I'll be showing you in a little. Lastly, you can move his arms around 360 degrees at the shoulder joint. I have to show you with this arm clearly because I can't, I can't move the arm because of that shoulder pad. This one isn't on a, a ratchet joint at all. This is just a ball joint, but it's a really tough ball joint. You actually have to put some force behind it to uh, get it to move around. For his torso, he's got two points of articulation. The first one is this mid-ab crunch, which you can see here. And uh, it can only really move one little hinge there is a ratchet joint in here and you can see that's just that's the full range of motion with that one uh, but you can also rotate slightly from left to right this one doesn't really have that much resistance compared to uh, much of the other joints in here but it's it's pretty solid in there the uh, the waist point of the torso as far as i can tell can only really rotate from left to right I'm trying not to move this and only move this, but it's kind of hard to do that. But this is his only, the only distance I can really get with it. So this really doesn't offer anything. Now for his legs, going outward, like I said, these are all on ratchets. Going outward, it's very limited, and that's as far as I could go outward. You can rotate his uh, leg at the hip, just like all the other small figures, but it's very limited. Going forward with his leg is uh, actually pretty good. It's on a ratchet joint just like going outward. And uh, you can give him a pretty good front kick. Although going backward, you can really do that on most of the figures. This one you can't at all. His giant butt cheek gets in the way and you just can't move this backward. He does have double jointed knees, but he really can't move any more than this. And finally for his feet, you can rotate his feet uh, downward and upward. And it's a pretty good uh, range of motion. As you can hear, this is on a ratchet joint as well. Uh, going side to side is very limited it really doesn't want to move any more than maybe 15 or 20 degrees uh, each way and of course you have your uh, your toe bend and this one's uh, pretty good most of these are always loose on these figures but um this one's uh 
pretty stiff. I almost completely forgot about his tail. You can't articulate the tail. Um, so we have a peg here that's going into the main body of the tail. This is fixed inside. I'm sure you probably could get it out, but I don't know why you would want to. But when you get this, when it's inside, the, when you take it out of the box, the peg here is pointing upward and it's kind of like pressing against the body. Trying to like unhinge that to put this in was quite difficult. But once you get the tail in, moving this is really no trouble at all because you have the leverage. So you have the range of motion here. You can also turn this as long as you put it in the right position. Okay, there we go. So you can rotate uh, 360 degrees all the way around as long as you put this in the right position to have the leverage to turn it. And then you can move downward or side to side depending on which way you have it. And of course you can also turn this around. You can hear how f uh, fixed in the, uh, the tail is. So here's all the accessories that came with Ape Vegeta. I think they hit everything that they should have with this figure. Um, again, I just wish it was in scale with everything else and not shrunken down. But anyway, I'm going to go through each one individually. Here's all the hands you get with Vegeta. From left to right, we have the grabbing hands, which are on him inside the box, and I swapped them out for the two fists. The middle, we have him with his pointing finger. where he was, I think he was about to crush Goku with, with his finger. I forget. And then lastly, we have him... Uh, with both hands wrapped around a, a in-scale Goku with uh, the figure. Um, it's really nice. Um, I, I just, I, again, I just wish the uh, the actual figure arts figures, the full-scale ones, could actually fit into his hands, but unfortunately, this is what we have. Here we have all the accessories for uh, the Yajirobe in-scale figure. From left to right, we have the stand that, hold, that affixes him to Vegeta's stand. The middle, we have the nub of Vegeta's tail, and then last, we have, we have the... Really nice little in-scale figure of Yajirobe, and you can see here on the back there's a little port to uh, affix him to this. I wanted to give you guys a quick look at how to switch out the face plates for this figure, because it's a little bit different than what we're used to. I'm going to be putting in his uh, normal eye face plate, which uh, is the only other one he comes with. So what you want to do is, you want to take off like his snout, which you know leaves his jaw open. It was funny when I got this earlier today, inside the box, this was kind of like loose hanging in there. And I'm like, did something happen to this? Why is this out? But it, 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 once you get it jostled a little bit, it does come out fairly easy. Um, you take the faceplate off, just like how you would with uh, bangs or like a faceplate of the smaller figures. And then you pop this in. And then you take the, the snout. And w once you get in there, it, get it in there far enough like it's not going to move so it's a solid uh, connection here's yajirobe attached to vegeta's base it's really no issue at all to uh take the tail off put the nub on and attach yajirobe to the back of it like i said he's attached with this little arm you can put it in whatever position you want you can also move him independently from it so if you want to have him at a different angle and uh here's the uh the tail and you can you know still articulate the tail in whatever position that it's in and if you would want, I mean, you can have the tail like hanging on to a uh, Tamashi action base like it's been like, you know, jettisoned from his body. But I'm not going to display him with this. Lastly, I just wanted to give you a look at his heavy duty uh, action base. And it's definitely one of the biggest bases I've ever seen in, you know, maybe like the 10 years of me collecting now. Um, this has a bunch of ratchet joints in it, just like the, uh, the figure itself. So... You can pretty much get it in any kind of pose you would want from, you know, at least a standing position. So that's the full range of motion of this. Uh, you can also move the, the arm section independently from it. Like, I don't know what you would want to do with this going this far backward, but I just wanted to show you that. And you can also move the, uh, the arms itself. And you're going to need to do that because you want to have it to have a, a nice like grasp on the figure. But then again, I'm kind of worried about paint transfer. So I wouldn't advise having it like squeezing the figure, maybe just lightly brushing it. It's really hard to say. In the future, I'm sure we'll have at least somebody say that maybe there was paint transfer, but who really knows. So anyway, that was my review. Next, I'll move into my final thoughts. So would I recommend you buying Ape Vegeta? Uh, it's difficult to say. Um, it really depends on your mentality in regards to the figure arts line. If you're like me and you want to buy up everything, you don't need me to even say that to you. But if you're new, in, if you're new to the line and 
or you're just casually collecting. I don't think it would be a good figure to get right at this time. Uh, then again, you know, when it's sold out in a year, it's probably going to go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars, maybe even upwards of a thousand. Who really knows? Because there are some really old figures in the line that go for crazy money on eBay, specifically the San Diego Comic-Con Super Saiyan Goku. I remember that's always been a really hot figure on eBay. Um, so I really, I really don't know because, I mean, the market for this line really fluctuates. Some stuff sits around forever, but in regards to buying it, I, I really can't give you an answer on it. Uh, in regards to quality control issues, I really haven't noticed anything. Like, there was a little bit of a grit on him. There was some of it on his, like, upper chest. But I thought it was, like, paint flex or something else. But I was able to get it off my fingernail, so it was really no issue at all. So, really, it's kind of almost a spotless figure in that regard. Um, the joints are really nice on it. They're really heavy duty. The stand's great. And I think I really recommend you always keep it on the stand because he's just so top-heavy. And uh, they give you a stand for a reason. They didn't just give it for, you know, show. He, he should be on this thing all the time. And luckily, I have a, a giant space that's enough for his base. So it won't uh, interfere with my collection. I really, I haven't even put it on my shelf yet to even see how it looks. Uh, oh, and also, um, a side note on that. I'll be posting my collection video update on my entire Dragon Ball Figure Arts collection tomorrow, which is Saturday. So this will be going up Friday night. So, you know, keep an eye out for that. I think I'm at at least 100 figures now. I try to do this video at least once a year since I started my channel. So I've gotten, um, let me think here, at least 40 figures, I think, since I originally started the channel. So uh, 100 figures. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of doubles in there, but I mean, you'll, you'll see it when I post the video. So yeah, guys, I mean, this is available everywhere. If you're thinking about it, you could definitely get it. I, you don't have to get it immediately, I don't think, because I think it's gonna the price is going to chase a lot of people away. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to get it. I, I hope this is um, a good starter figure for more giant figures. Like I, whenever they get around the Dragon Ball GT, I would really like a Golden Ape Baby Vegeta. I think that would look awesome. That's one of my most favorite villain designs in the series is pretty much all of Baby Vegeta's form, specifically his ape form. Uh, maybe they can do a Purunga. Uh, I don't know if they've ever talked about that. They did show an oversized Shenron figure. I think it was like last year, and I don't know whatever happened to that. So, uh, yeah, guys, I hope you like my review. I hope you can leave me a like and subscribe, and I hope I'll see you in my next video.